Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, we saw yesterday US market reversing sharply. Uh, at one point of time, Dow was down by around 460 point, and from there it reversed and ended at uh, over 200 point positive. So uh, that was mainly driven by a uh, well, few of the tech stock uh, like uh, Alphabet, uh, Meta, and uh, Amazon, and all which are likely to report results in uh, one or two days. And the uh, <clears throat> main reason for their up move was uh, the decline in interest rate. Uh, Ten-year bond yield came up from uh, 2.9 to 2.8. So uh, that has uh, boosted the valuations of uh, all tax stock. And uh, as such, uh, uh, the tax stock reversed their trend. And we saw up move in the US market. And taking view from US market, even Asian markets are showing good trend. And uh, even commodity, which was uh, down in the early morning or yesterday, are showing some sign of recovery. Like oil went down to yesterday around $100, and now it is uh, somewhere around $104. And similarly, aluminum uh, now down by around 1.8%. Earlier it was down by 3%. Copper is down by 0.5%, iron ore around uh, 1.5 and steel down by around 0.5. No doubt uh, most of the commodities are uh, met, uh, specifically in the metals are down but uh, are showing some sign of recovery from the bottom. Uh, futures are more of a flattish. So uh, yesterday also we saw Indian market correcting. So we may get some support because of international market improving in the today's uh, in the, uh, today market. I'll request technical team to take up from here. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Good morning, all of you. This is Party. Uh, looking towards the Asian markets, we believe our market is likely to open with a gap of opening at around 17,100 and above levels. And we are likely to witness some positive momentum during a day. For uh, On a technical background, uh, for the two-day purpose, the resistance is placed at uh, 17,140 with the first resistance zone. If it's cleared at level, 17,200 levels can be seen on the higher side. Uh, on the downside, the, the first support is placed at 17,000. That is the psychological resistance support level. If it's break that level, then 16,920, levels can be seen. Uh, 17,120 uh, is the very crucial level need to be watched because it is the resistance provided by its 50 DMA. And if the Nifty manages to maintain a positive closing above, that level, then this pullback rally is likely to be extended towards 17,200 to 17,400 levels on the higher sides. Coming towards the bank nifty side, uh, for the today intraday purpose, the bank nifty has a resistance at around 36,470 levels. Any more about that level, we expect a positive momentum to be carried forward towards 36,780 to 36,800 levels. On the downside, 35,850 would be the first support level. Below that level, 35,500 levels can be seen. Coming towards the Nifty Finance, 16,450 is the first resistance level. Above that level, 16,540 levels can be seen. Whereas on the downside, 16,270 and 16,160 levels are the uh, crucial support levels on the, this particular counter. Uh, stock specific, uh, Jyoti Labs really looks very good. Uh, even we have initiated a buy call on this particular counter. counter. Uh, the momentum is likely to be carried forward towards 178 to 180 levels. So when those who have missed this particular counter, uh, one can take a buy call above 162.40 levels for a target of a 178, uh, whereas on a downside, 154 levels can be kept as a stop loss. I think that's it from my end. I request to you guys to take a call for me. Uh, thank you, Swati. Good morning, everyone. So, as per yesterday's data on the derivative front, we are seeing that India is actually shoot up quite uh, sharply, uh, about fifteen percent, and giving close around twenty one, uh, around twenty one. So that is a cautious sign. But once if India VIX again comes below eighteen level and gets stable between eighteen to sixteen level, then we might expect the market to get stable around that point. Currently, as I said in the last week, also that Nifty is meeting in the range of sixteen thousand eight hundred to. 17,200 level. Once if Nifty gives closing above 17,200 level, then we might expect the buying momentum to be seen in the market. But currently, the view would be the range bound session. 
As for the oil pollution, sir, currently we are seeing that the in yesterday's session around 16,800 and then strike we are witnessing that the pollution are getting increased. So 16,800 will act as an important support. Till the point of time, Nifty is not reaching below 16,800 level. Till that point of time, we might witness a pullback session in the market. Till 17,100 to 150 levels on the upper end. While in the upper country, we are seeing that 17,200 is showing uh, strong resistance, and about that uh, clearance, we are seeing that 17,500 would be the next resistance for the market. So, current scenario for the market looks uh, positive. As for the sector specific in the stock specific, we expect a two to three sector which looks positive for current trading session. First would be the cement sector looks positive. Specific stock from the cement sector would be Ambuja Cement and ACC. These two companies look positive from the cement sector, while the other rest of the stocks that looks positive is a Polycap and Bajaj Auto. These two counter also looks positive for next one to two trading session. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, ever ready result is uh, declining. Uh, the revenue has declined by 11% year on year. Uh, EBITDA margin also uh, came at just 4% compared to uh, uh, double digits in both uh, year on year and quarter on quarter. Uh, there were significant input uh, uh, cost pressures uh, and also uh, supply chain disruptions, uh, especially the key commodity for this company is zinc, uh, which uh, witnessed uh, price increase. Uh, demand for both uh, batteries and flashlights also remained weak. Uh, uh, flashlights continue to suffer on account of dumping from China. And nowadays also people uh, have flashlights uh, in their mobile phones. So demand uh, will definitely get impacted. Uh, but uh, once the Burman uh, family acquires the company, they will look to revive the brand uh, ever ready and utilize its distribution network by entering new products and categories. In the recent past, we saw uh, Advent acquiring Eureka Forbes and uh, the stock got re-rated because uh, Advent's past track record of uh, turning around companies is uh, good. So similar thing can play out for Everready, but uh, it may take a couple of years in this case because uh, it will depend on uh, Burman family's aggression, how they are able to turn around this company. Uh, so it may take around two to three years. Uh, uh, you know, so only investors with that kind of time horizon can look at uh, uh, this company. Currently, uh, it is trading at uh, two times sales, which is on the cheaper side uh, for a consumer company. Uh, another news uh, is on hotel sector, uh, where, uh, as per media reports, uh, after a gap of two years, uh, uh, the industry uh, uh, tariffs uh, as well as uh, occupancy rates have reached uh, uh, pre-pandemic levels. So, uh, and uh, demand uh, is coming from uh, all segments uh, like travel, weddings, as well as corporate. Uh, so, this is positive for uh, Indian hotels and uh, lavatory. And uh, in case there is a fourth wave in India, it may result in correction in these stocks, uh, at which point one should look to uh, add on to them. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, Tatwa Chintan Pharma Chemicals came out with the results. It's a specialty chemicals company which got recently listed. The results were marginally below expectations because one of the, their key segment is SDA was impacted as the uh, ch uh, chip shortage is likely to continue, is continuing. And the company said that this is likely to impact their results for next two quarters as well. Other segments continue the demand trajectory and overall Tatwa was able to pass on the input cost and the freight cost burden to its customer. Uh, however, the margins were also impacted because of the SDA segment, which is a high margin uh, business. Uh, given that the stock trades at premium valuations of around 46 times FI23, we believe that uh, it can have a more negative impact uh, in today's trade as well because uh, it is like uh, it will continue for next two quarters. Uh, Biocon uh, has announced that Bio Biocon Malaysia has received $90 million order from the Ministry of Health Malaysia. The order is for manufacturing and supplying recombinant human insulin and is spread over three years. So this is positive for Biocon. Thank you. Yeah, good morning everyone. Snowman Logistics posted its result yesterday. The company has posted an okay set of numbers for the quarter with revenue growth coming in at 4.4% Q on Q. Uh, however, EBITDA margins has declined Q on Q and came in at 21.7% versus QQ of 24.9%. Uh, 
CN had acquired Cytec yesterday. Uh, just a small update. Uh, management indicates that the acquisition growth would be over and above the uh, outlook for FY23 of 30 to 15%. FY23 incremental revenue from acquisition is expected to be around 83 to 87 dollar million with EPS appreciation of 4 to 5 percent. A bit margin is expected to be accretive from year two. And FY24 EPS accretion, accretion is expected to be is expected to be around eight to ten percent. That is rupees five to six rupees. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, just one more update. Uh, Campus Activewear IPO is uh, opening today. Uh, this is uh, into the sports shoes category. Uh, the price band for the IPO is through 78 to 292, and it will be open till 28th April. The IPO from 1400 crores is for offer for sale because the old uh, uh, PE funds and some of the part from the promoters are offloading their share. The company is one of the largest and the fastest growing in this segment in the sports and the athlete wear uh, in the uh, footwear segment. Uh, the they have uh, uh, been mainly into the tire to and uh, trade uh, distribution segment wherein they supply to the traditional footwear stores. Uh, however, uh, slowly and steadily, the company is also coming into direct to sales segment wherein they are supplying through online and through their own stores, which is likely to increase more clarity, more awareness. And also because these are the high margin business likely to drive the growth uh, going forward. Uh, in terms of the growth, the company has posted 23% uh, on FI20. Uh, FI21 has been a very uh, let down and uh, disappointing uh, year for the whole footwear industry. Uh, though uh, still the company has gained market share in in FY21, as the whole industry went down by 30% and the company has gone down by 9% only. The margins we have seen that they are able to uh, improve year on year. In the nine months, they are able to do 19% margins versus 18% FY20. Uh, on the valuation side, uh, we have compared with all the major like the Relaxo, Bata, uh, uh, all these peers and, uh, and Metro as well as well and we believe that uh, there is some scope from the long-term point of view and given that the more awareness is coming up uh, we are positive on this and likely to recommend this to subscribe for long-term basis thank you yeah apart from this uh, yesterday uh, meg money fine came came up with the numbers and uh, Numbers were uh, uh, good. Uh, the caustic soda and chlorine together, that is ECU realization improved from around 45,000 to over 49,000. And uh, this is uh, what the management has indicated that this is likely to uh, further improve in the coming quarters. Uh, the results are likely, even in the coming quarter, are likely to be better. Uh, the key thing uh, for Megmani Fine Chem is uh, that a lot of new projects which uh, they have planned are coming up uh, on schedule in next one or two quarters. So that will keep on adding up to their uh, performance and uh, uh, performance and uh, profitability. So overall outlook on Megmani Fine Chem continue to remain positive. Then uh, GMDC has announced the result and uh, the results uh, were uh, very good. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, revenue has increased by around 46% quarter on quarter and EBITDA has increased by almost 100% quarter on quarter. Uh, even if we remember that uh, last quarter also, there was a substantial increase in uh, uh, the EBITDA uh, itself. So uh, with this uh, performance, uh, uh, the main reason for the, this type of performance is that uh, shortage of coal. Uh, GMDC is into lignite, so which act as a substitute for imported coal. So there is a big demand uh, which has come up for the lignite uh, from a domestic player and which is uh, getting monetized by the GMDC in recent uh, near term. 
so one one should remain watchful of uh, international coal prices uh, they are still uh, running high and uh, gmdc will continue to benefit from uh, this type of uh, high coal prices uh, with good demand from the domestic market for lignite and uh, that has resulted into higher volume also so overall uh, company look uh, performance looks positive and uh, stock should see good reaction in today's trade then tata metallic yesterday uh, in the con call had said that uh, uh, the big iron prices will continue to remain strong uh, what we see that uh, big iron prices has moved up uh, from around uh, 42 43000 to almost 58000 now uh, though there is a cost increase due to uh, cooking coal uh, prices increase but the impact will be of uh, somewhere around 5000 rupees uh, in the coming period for uh, tata metallic whereas the price increase is uh, almost around uh, uh, they got some benefit of uh, price increase in the march month so price increase will be somewhere around 8000 rupees to 10000 rupees for tata metallic if the current price of big iron sustain uh, management expect these peak, uh, peak iron prices to sustain even if the coke prices, uh, cooking coal prices come off, mainly because of uh, very good export demand uh, for the peak iron, uh, because uh, uh, of Ukraine uh, and Russia, these two countries which were supplying a lot of peak iron to the international market are now out of the market and uh, there is a big demand which has come up to India. So because of that, uh, uh, the Tata Metallic is likely to benefit on that account. Uh, but uh, the other division that is uh, DI pipe will continue to uh, report a softer number mainly on account of old order which uh, they are executing right now. So management has indicated that almost uh, almost uh, uh, in the coming uh, whatever their order book is there one third is from the old legacy order and uh, two third is from the new order which are at a higher prices. So that may take some more time to come up uh, and uh, near term uh, uh, DI pipe result can continue to remain soft. So overall <coughs> outlook from the pig iron point of view is positive but DI soft uh, company is getting into merged into uh, Tata, uh, uh, Tata long products so uh, that also will play along with this. So what we see that uh, to play the high cooking, uh, high pig iron prices, I think uh, uh, Kirloskar Ferris, uh, which is also one of the largest producer of pig iron can benefit uh, much more than uh, Tata HT. So one can look to uh, Kirloskar Ferris uh, for the advantage of pig iron prices. Now result for uh, 28th. Agrotech food is likely to announce results and likely uh, results are likely to see declining trend. Uh, quarter on quarter margins are likely to come off and uh, revenue growth uh, in quarter on quarter will be down by around 12% and year on year it will be flattish. Then Amuja uh, cement is likely to report number and uh, here what we had seen that the ACC has reported uh, comparatively better number. So quite possible Amuja cement can also report uh, improved in the number quarter on quarter so year on year epita pattern will come off but quarter on quarter the expectation is that around the uh, 125 rupees improvement uh, in the epita pattern and volume is likely to increase by around four percent year on year so results are likely to be comparatively better and uh, yesterday we had said that uh, the uh, in the current uh, scenario the cement companies has taken price increase of around 40 45 rupees and uh, which is likely to benefit in the coming quarter so overall outlook is positive for the cement sector and uh, result is likely to be better then uh, biocon is likely to report number and uh, here again the results are likely to be good revenue is likely to increase by around uh, 23 percent year on year and 30 percent increase in EBITDA so EBITDA margin is also likely to show improvement both quarter on quarter and year on year so biocon result is likely to be good whereas coromandel international result is likely to be okay uh, though there is a good growth in revenue expected of around 40 percent year on year but uh, 
the beta margin is likely to show declining trend both quarter on quarter and year on year. Then Philatex chemical is likely to report number. Last quarter they had reported a very good number and this quarter is again likely to repeat uh, the last quarter number and may show some improvement. Then Loras lab is likely to report number. Here uh, we may expect uh, Here we may expect uh, improvement in uh, uh, Loras lab is also likely to report good number. Quarter on quarter, they are expected to report now improved number. Revenue is likely to increase by around 21%. And uh, margins is also likely to show improvement quarter on quarter. So Loras lab result is likely to show improvement. Then Varun beverages is likely to report number. Here again, they are likely to report uh, improved set of number last year. Uh, because of the COVID, uh, their uh, sales got some disruption uh, in this uh, quarter. But uh, this year, uh, the sales are likely to be increased by around 17% and the beta margin is also likely to show improvement. Uh, the peak season is June quarter. So they are again, uh, commentary will be comparatively positive. Varun has indicated that uh, they will be declaring bonus in this quarterly results. So overall outlook positive. Then Vedanta is likely to show numbers. Uh, here we had seen that the Hindustan Zinc has come up with a number which were in line with expectations. So Vedanta, uh, around 50-60% of the result is of the Hindustan Zinc. So balance also likely to show improvement because of the commodity prices increase. And uh, uh, beta margin is further likely to improve from 31%. 0.5 to 35 percent in this quarter. The Nexus Bank is likely to report number. Here, the numbers are likely to show improvement. EBP is uh, sorry, profit NII is likely to increase by around 18 to 20 percent, and the uh, uh, slippage is also likely to come off from the peak. So, overall, result is likely to show improvement. That's all from us. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.